Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Praise Yah for you all joining us uh, today for our, our our weekly message um, of how we should walk. You know, it's the sons of Yah. So praise Yah for you all joining us, being a part of our, of, of this um, this week's uh, Torah lesson. Hallelujah. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pray. We're gonna dive right into the scriptures. And we're gonna we're gonna go there. We're gonna, we're gonna go there today. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna learn the truth. We're gonna live in the Word. And we're gonna let Yah be Yah in our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So praise Yah. So let's go start off with a word of prayer. We're gonna dive in. Hallelujah. So our my Yahuwah, we just coming for your presence in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach. And we ask you all, my Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua Hamashiach, to please forgive us all our sins and, and, and cleanse us all from all unrighteousness. Help us to walk in the, to live a set apart life and not live a life uh, the same as the world lives. Uh, as your word goes forth today, all my Yahuwah, in the name of Yahushua. I ask you to uh, let it not fall on deaf ears, but I pray that you would touch those who you are, 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 are desiring for the word to go, that salvation can take place, deliverance can take place, healing can take place, faith can increase, uh, that we'll be mindful of your word, that we have understanding, that we grow in our understanding concerning your scriptures and wisdom. So I pray that you be with us and teach us and guide us and lead us and show us your truth. We love you. We magnify you. In the name of Yahushua, I'm going to share we pray. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So praise Yah. So today, today again, uh, on our, our lesson, you know, we did with, um, you know, how, how should we walk, you know, as, um, as sons of Yah? And, and, and that's, a, that's a serious question because, you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, a lot of folks don't know how to walk, you know, um, as, a, as sons of Yah. And one thing that we do is you always walk in the, in the Ruach. So we're gonna read, we're gonna start with Galatians five, um, five and twenty. I'll uh, see five and sixteen when it says this right here. It says, uh, "This I say then, walk in the spirit, the word spirit or ruach, and you shall not fulfill the lust or the desires of your old nature, your carnal mindset of the flesh. Uh, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, uh, and the spirit against uh, uh, the flesh. Does that mean the flesh desires to have control?" But the spirit has had control, you know. Um, and the spirit gets the flesh, and these are contrary, the one to the other, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Meaning, verse eighteen, let's make this verse clear. It don't. It, this is not saying you don't have to follow the Torah. That's not what that says. It's, it's meaning that the law or the Torah. It's not against, you know, walking in the spirit. You know, so it says this. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. It means you are not you're not doing you're not going against or bound, you know, uh, 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 going against the law, because y'all's law is not done away with, at whatsoever. But if you are, but um, now so it, Paul says Paul Paul Paul, Paul says uh uh. To live by the what? Spirit. To live by to live, to, to live by the spirit. That you won't fulfill the desires or the lust of the flesh. Now let's bring the word to let, 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 let's, let's, let's bring the word to life because a lot of folks saying you know when 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 when, when it says that um um that when it says that we we, we all make think about sex because we hear the word. Lust, you know, mm. but but always hearing the word lust is not always meaning uh, 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 sex. So let's 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 let's, let's 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 bring some words out. We're gonna use some of these words in the Greek today. So it says, it says, "This I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, the longing, the desires, uh, concupiscence." Uh, of, of, of the flesh or the desires. So, 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 what's the desire of the flesh? The, the desire of the flesh is to do anything that's contrary to what the spirit uh, wants you to do. So, for, so Paul says in Galatians five verse seventeen, the flesh lusts of after the spirit. It's another. This, this, this another word, huh? So the flesh desires to be the 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 the, 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 the flesh sets its heart upon the spirit or the flesh. Uh, uh, from better words, covets. According to the scripture, you should that shall not covet. So the flesh desires to have control to be the spirit. 
The flesh desires to be numero, numero uno in charge. And the flesh cannot, your call, your call of mindset or your old nature, it can't be number one. It can't be numer numero uno, but the spirit also desires to be number one. Numero uno. The Ruach desires to take the, 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 the carnal mind's place to rule over that. And you have to decide as a human being, as a person, male or female, who you're going to let live. You're going to let your flesh live or you're going to let the spirit live. For so long, we have been allowing our flesh to take place. And we have been looking at things from a fleshly or a carnal mindset or old nature perspective. We have not gone beyond that because many of us have not walked by faith. So how do you walk by the Ruach? You got to walk by faith. That's the number one thing. To walk by the Spirit, the number one thing, the first thing is you got to have faith. If you don't have faith, you ain't going to never ever be able to overcome the flesh. What do I mean? You got to believe everything the word of God is, is being said to you and you can't question it because you don't see it, because it don't make no sense to you, because you don't like it. What you got to do, if someone comes to you and tells you the word of God and you've never heard the word of God, you don't understand the word of God and you never saw the inner word of God, the wisest thing for you to do above all things is to pray. To go pray, to get an understanding so that you can see what's being said to you. What do I mean? Well, let's go to Genesis 1. Excuse me, Genesis 2. Genesis 2 and 13. Because, um, no, not 13, 16. Yes, sorry. Because the thing is, when, 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 when many of us don't understand God's word, then you know, of course, you don't have faith in something you don't understand what's being said to you. So again, understand, and then it still have faith. So Genesis 2, verse 16 says this. It says that Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, Yahuwah Elohim or El, Yahuwah Elohim, commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Now, let's push pause. Let me say something to you all. So now, when Yah is speaking to a man, we 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 we've established, and we're try and we're trying to gain the understanding um, that when y'all when y'all is speaking to any individual on the planet, it's always it has to always be accompanied by faith. Most high has faith. Hebrews eleven beginning in verse one, it talks about how the word is framed in faith. It says the world was created by faith. That y'all spoke the world by faith. That means that y'all spoke something before he saw it. And when he spoke it, he believed it was going to come to pass. So now, when Yah speaks to us, we have to have that same kind of mindset, especially if we are created in his image and after his likeness. We have to be developed and have the same kind of mentality that Yah has. And how do we do that? Through prayer, through studying of his word, through gaining and understanding. So Genesis 2 verse 16 says this, And Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man, saying, Yahuwah commanded, the man said, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Conjunction. So now he says this here. Don't eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Here's the conjunction. We're going to hook it up. Why? Why? For it is for, for, for in the day thou eatest of it, thou uh, 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 eatest of it thereof, thou shalt die. That's why you should not eat from it. Why? Because the day you eat from that tree, you're going to die. That's the understanding. Now listen. Now, now, now listen. That's the word that was given to Yah, to, to Adam, from Yah. Now because of Adam's lack of faith, he disobeyed. The one thing that I, the one thing that I don't see in here, and I, and I heard Yah speak this to me today, as a matter of fact. He said, when you ask why, it's, it's, it's more than one reason, one reasoning for asking why. One of the reasons for asking why it's a lack of faith. Most folks ask why because they don't have a lack of they don't have faith. But also, you can also ask why. You know why? To gain an understanding. So that you will not, you know what I'm saying, just walk away. Because the most high knows who you are. You know, uh, uh, in time past, we've had some of our parents say, Well, you know, uh, don't go over here. You know, and then you say, Why? And then 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 they'll, they'll say, Well, you know, um, because I said so. That's not y'all. That's your parents. 
That's your mama. That's your daddy or some other adult telling you because I said so. And a lot of times they say they say so because they're, 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 they just feel like, you know what I'm trying to say, just telling you that. But in reality, wisdom would say that when you are teaching your children uh, or someone else and you tell them don't do something, you there's no problem with you explaining why you said what you said. And we have found nowhere in the scripture of y'all getting angry, getting offended because someone asked him a question to get an understanding. The scripture, don't, the, the scripture does not record anywhere of the Most High being offended for someone getting an understanding. As a matter of fact, when anyone goes to Yah to gain an understanding, he was he's willingly to give them that. So now, so 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 now we heard the Most High give a commandment to Adam, say, you know what? Don't eat from this tree. You know of the, of the knowledge of good and evil. This is Genesis two sixteen. He said, don't eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in that day. Let's go to it, because we got to have some understanding, and we got to learn. So it says, it's, it's, it, he commanded the man. He gave the man a commandment, saying, of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the what? Tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam and Eve should have asked Yah to help them. Because it's, 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 it's not a lack of faith where you've never died and you don't know what death is. No one had ever died. But because you never experienced a thing, because you never seen it, does not give you a visa to go against something that you have never experienced. No, he's your father. Out of respect, even if you don't understand what death is, you still have a clearer understanding, don't go to the tree. So even if Adam didn't have an understanding that, you know what? I ain't never died before. What is death? Eve, go ask Father Abba, uh, Yahuwah. What he had to do none of that. He, 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 he may have not known what death was. But he did know what the tree was. And he did know, don't eat from the tree. Like many of us, it's a lot of stuff coming to us new. We may not have, we, 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 we may not know, you know what I'm trying to say, what a certain thing is or why a certain thing is done, but we do know that we should not do a certain thing as well. Just like, you know, people say, well, don't eat pork. Why? <clears throat> and you may be saying why from many perspectives. But a normal man would be like, you know, why? Because it tastes good to me. So somebody may think you don't want to eat, to eat pork, you know, because it's nasty. But it may not be nasty. It's an unclean food. Pork chops, pork ribs, pork skin, sausages and biscuits, you know, bacon, bacon, that's not food. You know, uh, my wife told me when I first met her, she said that uh, she heard that some of the women who were pregnant, you know, were crazy to eat dirt. You know what I'm saying? Eat red clay dirt. Some women who were pregnant were crazy to eat um, rubber. You know, the taste of rubber from a tire, bicycle tire, uh, because it's a craving. Now, because you have that craving, it, it, it still don't make dirt food. Right. Dirt ain't food. You can put, you, you, you can pick dirt up. You put, you, 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 you can wet dirt up. You can make a mud pie. You can put salt, pepper, garlic powder. You can put onion powder. You put sugar, brown sugar. You can put butter. You can put you can put you can put bread on a, a, a dirt and make a dirt biscuit, you know, a dirt sandwich. You can put mustard and ketchup on dirt. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can pack it out on, 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 on some bread. You can put onions in the dirt. You can make the dirt look like a hamburger. But it still ain't food. It's still dirt. Just like putting making a pork chop and you know a filet mignon. You know, get you a nice old uh, filet mignon. Get you a nice old piece of steak with bacon around the middle. Around it, and you can you 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 can cook it and have the bacon smell it like mm, throughout the house. <laughs> it's still not food. Right. And so what you should do is explain to people, you know, why the pork is not food, to give them an understanding. But now, because someone says don't eat pork and tell you the word of Yah says it, even if you don't have an understanding of why or why not to eat the pork, you still know eating the pork is wrong. <laughs> and so Adam had, he knew, but what Adam did not have was faith. He 
to have faith. Not only did he not have faith, his wife didn't have faith. And it don't matter if Adam was off somewhere doing what he was supposed to not be doing. It don't matter how much time he spent with his wife. It don't matter if his wife took an adversary and, and what he done. Adam still had a commandment, and the commandment was, don't eat from this tree. My dad should be here next week, please. So, um, uh, so, um, uh, so let's, 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 let's look at something. Uh, Genesis 3 and 6, when the adversary comes to the woman, and the adversary tries the word of Yah. Now, listen here. The adversary, the adversary ain't going to try your understanding. He gonna, he, he, he going to try your understanding. For as not understanding what you heard, but for your understanding of who you should obey. And you should have an understanding to obey Yah regardless. So now this here, Genesis 3 and 6 says this, and the woman saw, she did what? She saw. She, so she was definitely not listening to Yah. And she definitely did not hear what her husband said. Now we all understand this, that hindsight is twenty twenty, right? <laughs> we see clearly. So we want about what? Faith. And about what? Sight. And the woman did what? Sight. Saw. saw. She's going by sight. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. What did y'all say? So it don't matter what she saw. Yeah. What does matter is what he said. Yeah, right. So the woman saw that the, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the tree was good for food. But y'all said that, um, that but y'all said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest of it, Thou shalt surely die. So now they saw something different than what y'all said. Because the word says that the woman saw, but y'all said don't do it. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And that it was and that and that it was pleasant to the what? Eyes. What about faith and not about what? Sight. And it was pleasant to the what? Eyes. But what about faith and not about what? Sight. And the tree was desired to make one. Wise. So she took of the uh, of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she and she became the provider. She stepped out of order because she was already out of order. But let me say something to you all, real clear, because this part has never been discussed. Because we got men saying, you know what, Eve ate first and she sinned and y'all couldn't replace. No, the whole thing was Adam's fault. And I'm going to bring it out to you. Adam was fully responsible. It does not matter what his wife did. Adam was fully responsible. We can have all kinds of questions where, where y'all can replace Eve. Well, it don't matter. Adam was fully responsible. And I'm going to show you how he was responsible. It says this right here. That she saw the tree and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Where was Adam? Alongside, her. <laughs> Alongside of her. So he understood she shouldn't do it. So 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 what he and not he should have said no. He should have stopped the situation. He should have stood up. He should he could have stopped it right then. He was right there. Because he was with her. But he chose to do what he did. So he was responsible because regards to her understanding, he still knew better. And he was the leader. And he was the head. But guess what he didn't do? He did not open his mouth to, to walk in obedience. He did not correct his wife. He did not correct the serpent. And he did not repent. He was completely wrong. So how should we walk as children of God? We should walk upright. Even if we see somebody that we told uh, that they should not do a certain thing, it does not mean that we should participate because of who they are. Right. We should walk in God's righteousness in spite of the person. But what we do is we allow close relationships with other people make us not obey God. And that's a sin. And it's wrong. And that's what we do. We do with our spouses, we do with our children, we do with our parents. We want to obey everybody else and don't want to hurt nobody else's heart, 
No one else's feelings, but we don't care nothing about y'all. And that's wrong. And that's a sin. But we want to sit here and holler out how much we love y'all and how much we are sons of y'all and how we live for y'all and how he's our friend and we love him. But when it comes down to walking in obedience to y'all's word, all of a sudden that love, that friendship, <laughs> that being close, we forgot where it went. And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, men and women, that our disobedience brings on another spirit. It places us in a corner mindset. It has us walking in fear, walking in pride, walking in doubt, walking in unbelief because we disobey Yah's word, because we choose not to have an understanding. See, it was Adam's choice not to gain an understanding. Even though the Most High never told Adam what that was, he still told Adam what, where and what and what happens about all about that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And that's why we should make wise decisions when it comes to Yah's word and doing what Yah tells us to do. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. 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 Let me tell you something. These right here, uh, Genesis 5, 17, uh, are not, not only are these works of the flesh, but these right here, I'm going to tell you right now that you, 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 you don't have faith if you are walking, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, um, by the time we get to, you know, uh, we're going to start at 17, but by, by, by the time we get to these things, you can't have faith um, doing everything contrary to God's word. No, you can't. And I want you to show me different then. Because God's just 5, 17 says this, for the flesh lusts against the spirit. You can't have faith walking in the flesh. So then show me Adam's faith. Show me Eve's faith. Did her faith come in when she saw the tree look good? Did it come in when the tree had a piece of the piece? Did it come in when the tree was in a wire? No. What wisdom do you want? Godly wisdom or worldly wisdom? Pharaoh had worldly wisdom. He made folks in bondage. Your worldly wisdom, you don't leave, you don't understand him. It causes others to go and bondage along with you. It caused your death. Ask Pharaoh. It caused Pharaoh's death. But he put Israel in bondage. Pay attention. Excuse me. Pay attention. Yeah, it's power in that. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another. They don't like each other. They don't get along. So you cannot do the things that you would. The flesh will make you stop doing what Yah says. But the spirit will make you stop do what the adversary says. <laughs> See, the spirit wants you to obey Yah. Because he knows what's beneficial. But the flesh wants you to obey you. Your lust and your flesh, your own desires, what somebody else says. Because it knows what's not beneficial. It only knows how it makes it feel to do wrong. Mm. We're going to get on it. And, and today, you know, some of y'all may stop following me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say some stuff that's going to be kind of close to home. I ain't going to say no bad words, but I'm going to say some stuff that you're going to know what I'm saying. So let's go ahead and just get it on out there. So the flesh must have against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary uh, to uh, the one to another. So you cannot do the things you would. But if you are led by the spirit, you, you, you're, you're not under the law. Meaning that, that the law has no, the, 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 the law is not against these things. From, for, for better words. Uh, verse 19 is what I want to get to. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Uh-oh. That what? What does manifest mean? They show, out. they show up and show out. You know, just like I heard somebody say, I want to manifest something. Yeah. Prosperity this year. That's idolatry. That's not y'all. And if you manifest a thing, you better stop it. Let me express to you. You can't manifest nothing. You cannot speak those things that be not as though they were. The Bible don't say that. Reread your Bible. It said Abraham believed in Yah who raised the dead and spoke those things that did not exist as though they already did. Yah did that, not Abraham. You can't go in the scripture and say and, 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 
find nowhere in the scripture where it says name it and claim it. You can't name it and claim it. No. You can only claim what you purpose over your life. So quit naming and claiming stuff. Quit trying to manifest stuff and humble yourself. Follow your face and ask Yah to show you what his purpose is in your life. So you can become who he called you to be and not do your own thing like you are. Want to say, it's my thing. You know, do what you want to do. And I can't tell you who to sock it to. Well, in this walk, it's not your thing. You know And you don't do what you want to do. You are bought with a price. So you are not your own. So anyway, uh, now, works of the flesh are, are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. Now, look here, adultery, married people. You, I, 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 I don't care if you're a pastor. I don't care if you're a deacon. I don't care who you are. If you are married, now, if you're married to the same sex, you're going to hell anyway if you don't repent. Because being homosexual, you're a man. And, and guess what? I'm going to get LBGTQ and who all else, ever else, the Qs. Mm. And you come on and fight me because I ain't got to fight you back. Most I'm going to fight you. <laughs> so you wind up trying to fight me, you wind up seeing yourself, you know, looking really bad because I ain't got to fight my own battles. You can attack me. You can bring my name out. You can down me, dog me, whatever. You can do all those things. I can't stop you. But one thing I can do is pray. Seek y'all. And he'll perform his own word. He'll deal with you. So if you are a homosexual man or woman, you're going to hell if you don't repent. Being gay is a sin. And you're not born like that. That's a lie from the from, from the adversary. No, that's a choice you make. The most high don't make make, make uh, 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 mistakes. Right. Yeah, that's a decision you made. Because little children don't even, a little three-year-old boy don't have no attention to nobody. He won't play with toys. Suck his fingers in his thumb and eat. He don't want to. He don't want to sleep with no man or woman. He don't understand that. Neither do a female. A, a female that age neither. So if born like that, you lie. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. adultery is a sin. It's fornication. It's, it's wrong. So I don't care how big her butt look, how big his chest look. It don't matter how unhappy you are at home. It don't matter what they've done to you. What you have no excuse to sin against Yah. I, 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 I'm talking to those who are saved, who, who say they are saved, because the Bible is not written to those who don't know Yah. Because those who don't know Yah ain't going to read the Bible. But those who don't know Yah, I'm talking to you, saved folks. The sinner will repent. So the so-called Israelite who has salvation, or the way you're accustomed to the covenant promises, or where you're native born, I'm talking to you. And some of these men with these same, these two wives club, I'll be this adultery. That's just my opinion. Because the Bible, the Bible does not say you're going to hell for having two wives. But the Bible says in Deuteronomy 17, 17, that the king should not take upon himself more than one wife. And here y'all Israelites call yourselves kings with two wives. You can't be a king doing like that, fool. Read your scriptures. Oh, they're trying to be deep. Read the Bible. Deuteronomy 17, read it then. Come talk to me. Because it says that. You know, anyway. Then you're supposed to be a pastor. Well, let's go to the scripture then. Most I know how to lead. We go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 3? Or 2 Timothy 3? We're going to find it. Being, being a pastor. Being a pastor. Let's find 2 Timothy. Oh, I know I'm in, I'm, in, I'm in the wrong book. I'm going to Thessalonians. <laughs> My bad. 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy 3. I don't know what I'm trying to figure out what's going on. So, um, it says, um, let's read it. it says, um, um, if, uh, it, uh, this is a true saying. If a man desires to be the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. The husband of what? Now, I see all these preachers come to you, all you so-called pastors. It's the same thing, bishop, pastor, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you got two wives, you you out of order. Two good husband of one wife. You know, so anyway, I'm just the deacons also. You need to rule your whole house well. You know, um, let the deacon, uh, 1 Timothy 3, 12, let the deacon be the husband of one wife. So, you know, and, and, and I brought that out because that's what people use as excuses. I ain't no preacher. Well, guess what? That's your leader. Follow the leader. Because everybody want to bring out excuses. You know, um, uh, 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 well, you don't have more than one wife. No, it's a sin. It's wrong. I, Paul said, and I believe Paul for the Torah. And I don't believe Paul went against anything Yahushua said or Yah said. Paul never did go against Torah. At all. 
I can't find nowhere. I've read the Torah, I, I, but I understand the difference between tradition and the Torah too. And Paul did use some tradition, but he never ever went against the Torah. So anyway, but the thing is that many people want to want, want, want to try to use an excuse, but adultery is a sin. Adultery is not fulfilling the spirit. It's an, it, it, it's a carnal mind thing. It's, it's, it's against Yah's Torah, and we should not commit adultery. Right. Whether you are a man, whether you are a woman, you would not inherit the kingdom of Yah. How should how, how are you? How do you have? How do you not have enough self discipline, man or woman, to keep your hands to yourself, to keep your thing in your pants, to keep your pants pulled up? I don't care how you make your your pants get wet and sore. I don't care how she make you get in the erection and you and you gotta sit to the side because you can't stand up because everybody gonna see your business. Your mind should never get to that place, but our mind get to that place because why? We yeah, care wow. more about ourselves than we do about y'all. You should be ashamed with having a simple thoughts come to your mind. As a matter of fact, when stuff comes to your mind, you should put that stuff down and begin to repent and not allow it to take place in your heart. Because, But what we don't is, we want to go for We want to go for the gusto. We want to go try, oh, I just had to do it. And then we use excuses. How you manage your spouse. How, you, how, how your spouse beats you up or don't take care of you or don't talk to you enough or don't spend enough time. Whatever kind of excuses you want to use, it don't cut the mustard. Adultery is a sin. And the Most High will judge you if you walk in it. How should you walk as children of Yah? Even fornication. You know, you want to have a, you want to fornicate. Let me explain something to you. Let's just go to Hebrews 13 to those who want to challenge the truth today. Fornication. Let me tell you something. Watch the pornography. It's adultery. Mm -hmm. it's, fornication. it's fornication as well. Yes. And we're sitting down because we, we need to teach so you can hear the word of Yah. Let's read. Um, we're gonna bring we're gonna bring out uh, uh, some words in the Greek uh, as well. But the word says in Hebrews thirteen and four. It says marriage. Uh, it's honorable at all, and the bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers will, uh, 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 y'all will dress. This word, uh, uh, adulterers, it's, uh, it's, 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 no, 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 no. This word, uh, whoremongers, ain't it? This word, whoremongers, it's the Greek word pornos. We get our word pornography from. It means uh, uh, um, a prostitute, a uh, male prostitute, a fornicator. So, so, so he's talking about fornicators and adulterers. So a fornicator is a whore. What are you, a man or a woman? If you fornicate, you are a whore. Male or a woman, and the most high is going to judge you. Because why should you tell what you love y'all, especially some of y'all, these, these so-called preachers and these pastors? How are you, and deacons? I'm talking to the leadership today as well. How is it that we say we love y'all, but we can't keep our dinklingers in our pants? Taking advantage of y'all's people. That's not wise. It's a sin. It cause your life. Not only will it cause your natural life, it will cause your spiritual life. As a matter of fact, Proverbs says that a man who commits adultery is a man that doesn't that don't have no understanding. That's deep. Because a whole lot of pastors and deacons and so-called women and men of y'all are or, or in, in, in these assemblies who sound intelligent, who sound smart. Who breaks the word down in Hebrew and Greek and, 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 and bringing stuff out being deep and, 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 and super hoes. Adulterous and all that stuff. So you don't have no understanding. That's why it's good for us who are the children of Yah to have the spirit of discernment. To not allow the adversary to, to, to continue to dupe you. Because let me express something to you. With th th those people who have those spirits that's over you. If you allow them to lead you, you're probably going to begin to do what they do. And you wonder why your life is all jacked up. Because look where you are. Look at your leadership. Look how you're living. You need, what you need to start doing is opening your Bible for yourself. And read it. So whenever, so whenever a man or a woman uh, uh, y or y'all someone come to you to give you the scripture, you should be able to go to it and follow through with yourself as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So praise y'all. Uncleanliness. Um. M morally unclean, impurity, being unclean, doing things, living ways, living sinful. Zero art, hidden secret sin makes you want to clean. Mm -hmm. yes. Let me give you a good example then. Yes. Yes. Um, doing things sneakily, 
Thank you for getting away with it. You were unclean. And y'all show, showed Miriam that she was unclean, even though her and Aaron was talking behind Moses' back. <laughs> so people who gossip about people, you unclean. People who lie secretly, you unclean. People who do sin secretly, you are unclean. And you will not inherit the kingdom of Yah being unclean. Give you a great example of Lashon Hurrah for Ben Speech talking about somebody, putting folks yeah. down because you don't like what they do or, or, or understand what they're doing. You want to dog them out, try to, draw, try, try to sow discord. Y'all going to judge you for that. How should we walk as the children of Yah? We should walk live clean lives, not be unclean. For example, Miriam, uh, Numbers 21, and Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses. They speak against Moses because, why did they speak against Moses? Because of the Hamite, the Cushite. Because he was not married to a Hebrew. Saying that day, we want to judge folks, put them down. He ain't married to a guess, guess what? Moses was, a, Moses was a Hebrew. He was not married to a Hebrew. His wife wasn't no Hebrew. He didn't divorce her. And he was still used by Yah. What we do is give our opinion about other folks. We want, but in 2022, we want to use the white woman. What's the difference between a Hamite and a Jeff and, 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 and Jeff is Jeffite? You fat, what you want to call them? Neither one of them are Hebrews. And you didn't see Yah not use Moses because who he was married to. But we saw people getting involved and saying things, being being wrong, and you weren't clean having that kind of mindset. Go ahead and challenge me. I want you to. Because show me in the scripture where I'm wrong at. It says that Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Egyptian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian, excuse me, Ethiopian woman who had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, have not Yahuwah indeed spoken only by Moshe? Have he not spoken also by us? And Yahuwah heard it. And let me say something to you. Yah heard, Yah used Miriam. When you read Jasher and Jubilees, you will see Miriam prophesying about Moses' birth. You will see Yah using her, but she was still unclean. Because Yah used you, don't make you all of a sudden be up here. You can still be unclean with your used self. He said that Moses was meek, but let's look at something. Verse 4 says something. And Yahuwah spake suddenly. What? Quickly. Suddenly, all of a sudden. Suddenly to Moshe. And that what it said? Mm -hmm. And unto Aaron. And unto Miriam. Come out, you three, into the tabernacle of the congregation. And they came out. Moses probably didn't even know what was going on. But Aaron and Miriam them knew. And most I got finished dealing with Miriam them. Of how he spoke to Aaron, <coughs> excuse me, when the Most High um, got, got finished speaking to um, uh, uh, Miriam and Aaron, you know, um, and he got finished rebuking them, it said, and Miriam was leprous. She had uh, Zara, Zara or Zara Ot. She was unclean. How, I, how do I know that a leper is unclean? I'll give you a notice. We're going to preach up the scripture. We're going to go to he, uh, Matthew. In, uh, eighth chapter, beginning at verse one, Matthew eight and one says this: And when he had came down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a what? Leper. A leper. Mm -hmm. Somebody with zeraot. What's the Greek word for this? Lepros. Lepros. Somebody with zeraot. There came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Master. If thou wilt, thou canst do what? Make me clean. Make me clean. He wasn't sick. He was unclean. So being unclean, talking about folks living a dirty life, we can go to Gehazi. We can go to uh, uh, Naaman. Naaman had pride. Gehazi was a liar. Uzziah had pride. 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 These things. Make you unclean. Having a horrible attitude, a bad mindset. Mm. Makes you unclean. And you will not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Right. Having that kind of mindset. Mm -hmm. La see this La see that. Let's see this. Let's see this. Let's see this. 
<laughs> wantingness of something, mm. being incontent. Um, what, what else can we do? Uh, uh, um, uh, derivation. Um, filthy. Uh, filthy. Mm. What else? What else? What else? Um, you cannot inherit the kingdom of Yah. Promiscuous. Being promiscuous. Mm -hmm. All upon folks. We just gotta do it. Threesomes. What they call them, not the twas, what you want to call it. You go to hell for this stuff. Strong lust. You know, strong yeah. lust. And the thing is that the adversary, he, he what he does is try to make us see, see things from a, a, a surface perspective. That we look at things from, you know, um, an uh, uh, outer perspective and not by the spirit. So we, we, we live by how we feel or, 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 or what we see or what others say instead of just being led by faith. And we can't be moved like that. Idolatry. This is one of the biggest things. Christianity. Christianity, y'all, <laughs> is idolatry. And some of y'all don't go to hell because you because you want to be a Christian because you don't understand what I'm saying. You think what I'm saying is crazy and don't make no sense. You get offended. But the thing about it is, you don't even go to the Bible and read to see if to see if what I'm saying is the truth or not. Christianity, Islam. This is idolatry. Christmas, Easter, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, or how some of the Jewish folks celebrate it. Easter, Thanksgiving, these things are idolatry. But we don't want to give it up because your mama them did it for so long. Mama them had Easter egg hunts. Mama them had the, the, the big yellow, purple, green, and orange and red hats and the big old dresses and, 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 and the pretty colored shoes. And daddy them had, daddy them had the, the, the alligator uh, shoes and, and the brand new suit. And, and Uncle <laughs> Jumbo, who ain't been to church all year because he's an alcoholic or he's a crackhead, he come to church to please mama on Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. And everybody want to get up in the morning, oh, to shout. But, but guess what? You, you're a hypocrite. Just on that alone, because your life ain't, ain't ain't different. And on top of that, then you go and eat unclean food. You eat a, a pork. You know what I'm saying? And then you eat a, a, a Easter egg. Like rabbits really give egg. It's a rabbit reptile. Like rabbits really give birth to eggs. <laughs> yeah, they just birth You know what I'm saying? And then here we is, you know what I'm saying, doing these things, and we're thinking that it's right. But it's idolatry. And then when someone come tell you that, hey, you should not be these things mm -hmm. because for so long you've been there, you want to think that crazy when not, not actually you ain't studying the scripture. You're going on idolatry, which is going to cause you to lose out on having eternal life or witchcraft. Not only, the, 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 not only doing so-called magic, but disobedience. Yeah. We gotta check ourselves. How should we walk in the children of y'all? Hating one another, various emulations, rap, strife, seditions, heresies. And, 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 and you know what's amazing is this ain't even talking about unbelievers. Mm, it's, about believers. it's talking about believers doing these things. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm not trying to bash anyone, because um I heard a sad story today. But I can relate, and I'm gonna relate about this thing. Uh, it, it, it's a police officer. In the city where I live in, he was charged with capital murder for killing his girlfriend yesterday. This, this is someone who was supposed to uphold the law. This is someone who was supposed to take you to jail for murder, take you to jail for domestic violence, take you to jail for committing the crime. But dog, he killed his own wife. Now, I don't know the circumstances of a girlfriend. I don't know what, but then he, then he went on this because I read it. This bitch, he hollered out, shots fired to try to make himself look innocent. But he was arrested for capital murder. Mm -hmm. And this is someone who's supposed to be looking out for me and my community. That It's not judging him, downing him, but it bothers me. It concerns me. Because if you are officer of the law and you are kissing someone who you love, there's no telling what you would do to me. If I make you mad. But I'm using that example because I'm talking about what I'm reading here are us who are supposed to be living for y'all. And look how we're look how we're living. Mm -hmm. This is scary. Yeah. 
It's dangerous. Why does this not bring a conviction upon your heart? Why does this not make you want to turn from that sin mm. and to begin to live right? Why does this offend you? Mm. Fathers, mothers, do you want your own children being afraid of you? I don't want my sons being afraid of me. I don't want my daughters being afraid of me. I don't want my wife being afraid of me. I don't want my grandchildren being afraid of me. I don't want my friends, my brothers being afraid of me. No. So then I need to live right. I should not be a pastor walking around doing these things, envying people, murdering folks, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. No. How should we act as the truth of y'all? We should not live deliberately, intentionally in sin. We should not live despising y'all's word. Yeah. Acting presumptuously. Yes. We should be humble, you all, and let Yah grow us up and make us into who He called us to be. Yeah, we all got a long way to grow. And sometimes when certain things happen in our lives, it, 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 it's good for some of them things to happen to teach us, you know, where we are, to help us to see we are not what we thought we were. But it should not get to the point because it, 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 to, that we had to kill somebody to realize, you know what, I made a bad decision. Right. It shouldn't get to a point. I got to divorce my wife or she got to divorce me because we cheated on one another. Right. Or get to a point that me and my brother can't get along because I envy him or I hate him. Mm. We need to do a heart check. We need to check ourselves. We need to walk by faith. We need to get a better understanding of what faith is. Yeah. It takes faith for us, you all, to walk in the Ruach. It don't take no faith to walk in the flesh. Most of us, as a matter of fact, that's how we sin and disobey Yah because of our lack of faith. When we have marriage problems, instead of cheating on your spouse, how about going to pray and asking Yah to help you to, be, to, to work it out with your spouse? And then as a man, humbling yourself enough to listen to your wife without being mad and don't want to hear her, or as a woman, humbling yourself to submit to your husband and respect him instead of being disrespectful. You know what I'm saying? Or, or, or children to show, you know what I'm saying, uh, 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 humility towards your parents and honor them, or even that's your brothers to submit one to another to learn how to have a decent conversation. Even if you disagree with one another without walking away from each other mm -hmm. and just throwing a towel in and breaking covenant all because our flesh, we can't get past how we feel. No, no, no. Really, how should we walk? You know, as the children of Yah, or or or, 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 or are, are many of us gonna be like Adam was? I know in time past I've been like Adam, not to the point of allowing my wife to eat the fruit, but knowing Yah says something and then sit here and watch other folks, not just my spouse, but other folks do certain things, and I know it ain't right, but I partake in it. Why? Because they're doing it as well. That's <laughs> called compromising. And how can we say we have faith? We would want to compromise against the word of Yah. Right. Yeah. No, we got to get out of that mode. Yeah. Begin to walk in righteousness and ask Yah to help us do what he has called for us to do. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. Meaning that the Torah is not against these things. And they which are a Mashiachs have crucified the old nature with the affections and the lust. So if we live by the Spirit, let us also do what? Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Trying to look good. Trying to uh, 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 overestimate ourselves. Or trying to have a proud look. Or being conceited. Looking down upon others. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. We, all of Israel, I'm talking to all of Israel. 
Everybody, everybody that's going to hear me and share with your friends. This is one of the biggest things that we lack as the children of y'all is our love for one another. Do we really love each other? Because in the case, then why y'all leave the assemblies y'all in when, you, when something don't go your way? When your pastor correct you, you gone all of a sudden. When they see something out across, across the, 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 the podium and they're teaching, they're talking about you. You leave. You want to walk from people. You don't want to be about his friend. You stop talking to them. Not, I, I, I'm not talking about people who did you wrong. Well, even them. Love them. I'm not talking about your enemy. I'm talking about your brother. We, 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 we so hypocritical. Yeah, we hypocritical. We don't keep our worry bunch of bunch of fluff. Bunch of foo foo. We tell each other we love each other all the time, but we do that most of the time in good situations. When things are going well. That ain't always the truth. You see, I've learned some throughout life. The best time to show you love somebody. It's while you're going through something with them. Mm -hmm. When y'all having an issue getting along. When y'all having an issue communicating. That's the best time to show love. When your brother get on your nerves. Or sister. When they make, when they make themselves hard to love. Mm -hmm. When they're doing things and saying things that you don't agree with. Then can you walk by faith. Because the love of someone takes faith. Because it's to be obedient in spite of what it looks like or how it feels. But we think to love somebody, excuse me, but we think faith is only going to get something. I'm going to get me a car. I'm going to get me a house. I'm going to get me a spouse. I'm going to get me some money for my own business. We think something materialistic when it comes to money, when it comes to material, when it comes to something natural. But it takes faith to love someone. My wife tell me she loved me. I believe her. Cause I put her through hell before. Mm -hmm. She told me she was my best friend one time. And I said, "No, you ain't. Mm -hmm. I don't believe my best friend because you don't do this and you don't do that and blase blase mm -hmm. and skippity whoop." Mm -hmm. But then when you sit back and think about it, she's she my best friend mm -hmm. because I because it's been challenged. Right. See, I've been married twenty three years, <laughs> so I can say that from that perspective. <laughs> Some of y'all have a lot, a lot of adversary. To deceive y'all. I'm not talking about the ones who have been domestic, beat up, abused, get away, run. I ain't talking about the one that the man or the woman kept cheating on you. I'm talking about the one who said it wrecks out of differences. When you can't swallow your pride, humble yourself and have a conversation. When you can't walk in forgiveness. When you're being mean and rude and evil and just wicked toward one another. But you're supposed to be a believer of the Most High Yah. You in the flesh. You need to repent of your sins and love your neighbor. Or joy. It's funny how we have joy when all is well. When, when, when it's sunny outside and it's not cool outside. If we go out there and, and do splits and flips and, 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 and grill and laugh and talk it up, we have having joy. But you should be able to have joy because you should have faith as well as when, 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 when times are difficult. Right. When things are not happening like they should. When things are not going how they should go. You still should have joy. Why? Because you have faith that no matter what you're going through, no matter what it's looking like, that Yah is going to bring you out. Yah is with you, and you're going to rejoice in Him anyway. His, his the, 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 the joy of Yah, that's your strength. Read Nehemiah 8 and 10. Or Nehemiah 8 and 10. That's your strength. Or, or you know, or Shalom. It's amazing how we have peace or shalom when all is well. You should be able to have shalom when it don't look well, when it don't feel well, when, 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 when you hear the bad news. You should still be able to have peace in Yah. But you know, that's when it's tested. When you're going through something. See you all, what makes us precious is the trials we go through. Many are the afflictions we have, but Yah breaks out of every last one of them. But when we come out of them, that's when we are able to go to another level in our faith. Yes. 
You can't go from faith to faith if your faith has not been tried. And let me tell you something. You're going to be tried. Stuff is going to arise in your life. Are you going to hold on to y'all then? And I'm telling you the truth. Man, I'm going through stuff right now, but I refuse to not believe in y'all. When am I going to come out? I don't know. But I trust in the most high Yahuwah. Hallelujah. He will do what he said he is going to do. Yeah, and I know I'm being tried by this because I know we got to have patience. You see, you know what? Let me say something about the next one. As a matter of fact, long suffering. Patience. There are many people don't want to suffer long. Don't want to have patience. But patience is the highest form of discipline. And I've heard people say, you know what? Uh, don't pray for patience because you pray for that. You're going to go through something. Let me tell you something. You're going to have trials and tests. Bad things are going to happen in your life. Whether you ask for patience or not, just simply being on the planet, you're going to have tough times in life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it don't matter you pray about it. You know, I've seen dogs start to death. And they don't even know y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We see atheists die from starvation. Muslims die from starvation. They don't even know y'all. So, 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 so you're going to go through life, period. You, you, you got to learn how to trust in the most high y'all who are. And suffer, long suffering. The, the most high, if, 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 if there's anybody ever that has ever been had long suffering. It's the most high y'all. He's very patient. Even with you. Do you have the audacity to sit here and listen to me and think that you have not done something to make y'all feel disappointed? You lie if you think so. They think you haven't. You've said things. You've acted certain ways. You've done stuff. And guess what? He has not thrown you away. He has, he has not done with you yet. He still loves you the same. Has not changed his mind about you. Who are you? To change your mind about people. I got a good parable to give y'all for this then. There was a man that owed his master 10,000 talents. And, and the master said, I'll tell you what you do. Throw him in jail. Throw it like his family up and sell everything they got. And don't let him out until he give me back what he owed me. And the man began to plead with his master. Began to cry out to him. Began to say, have mercy on me. Please have mercy on me. You know, beg him for his life. Please don't let me go to jail. Help us all out. Because the man we realized the debt he owed he couldn't pay. And not only could he pay when, 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 when judgment was pronounced against him, it not only affected him, his wife was affected, his children were too. And he probably was thinking in his mind, will we leave them? Or well, what's happening to them? And he begged, by, by him begging his master, you know, to please have mercy upon me. He said, you know what I'm going to do? He ain't going to go to jail. He forgave that man. Of his debt. All of a sudden, a man go out there and see his own fellow servant. Mm -hmm. Somebody on his own level. I think it's 10,000 denarius. Or the hell, the man, 100 denarius. He said, Man, where my money at? Man, I ain't got a half person. Man, get my money, man. Say, grab him by a throat. Man, get my money, man. Say, grab him by a throat. Say, what have mercy on him? Mm -hmm. You just got to forget it for $10,000 or 10,000 denarius, and the man owe you 100, and you got a man by a throat. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll show no mercy. Yeah, they went and told on him. Man's called him a wicked servant. Many of y'all like that, huh? I reckon. That, that we want y'all to have mercy on us. We want y'all to show us the way out. Mm. Open mm. the door for me. Right. Almost high, show me the silver lining behind a dark cloud. Because mm. I'm having a tough time in my life. We want to cry out to the most high y'all what we're going through. But when somebody else is going through something that we see them, well, you're seeing that you ain't done right. Mm. You need to get up off your, look at you. And we don't want to have no mercy. Shame on you. You might, want to even, you might want to even try to bear with them a little bit while they're going through their little ordeal. Oh, yeah, let's talk about it then. Tempers and stuff, long suffering and stuff. I have family members myself that are drug addicts, you know, uh, 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 pill heads and, and, and cocaine <coughs> addiction. And some of them on heroin and some of them on other kinds of, of, of drugs. And you know what? That's still my family. When I look at them, some of them going down in their face, some of them going down, you know what, in their body. But they're still my family. Yeah. But you know what? Even when they stink itself, if some of them do stay, I'm going to hug them, I'm going to love on them. I'm not going to be ashamed to be around them in public. I'm going to feed them out. Because that's my family. And I understand that one thing that the most I told me is that love yeah. will cover a multitude of sin. And maybe if I love them, and maybe if I don't judge them, and I'm patient with them, you no know, have a long suffering, that they get a conviction in their heart. So you know what? Let me change. Let me change. Because I remember when Pastor Battle, who we used to call Q-Ball, 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> LAP, uh, APG. You know, they, 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 he was a blood out there in them streets throwing up gang sites and shooting at folks and snorting powder of cocaine himself and, 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 and sticking guns at folks, robbing folks and, and, and shooting at people. Cause I've done all those things that, that he's changed. You know? And today he's teaching the word. So if he can change, I can change. See, this is why you don't throw folks away because anybody changed, even you yourself, you know what I'm trying to say, has changed. Yeah, you, you know you have. Yeah. So, 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 so why can you not you know, be patient with others? Praise y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Or gentleness, you know, or goodness, you know what I'm saying? Or, or, or faith. Oh, faith, belief, trust, Amon and Muna. Where are they want to use? Being firm, steadfast, being faithful. Yeah. See, you gotta have that in the spirit. You know why many of us want to get depressed? My I would tell y'all, I gotta go ahead and just tell the truth by myself, being transparent. I had I I, I had so-called read read this, this information and I went and took a test, y'all, and I was overconfident and I went and took that test and it was an hour and 30 minute test. I was done in 30 minutes, y'all, and I came out and I failed the test. I failed. Man, I was so hurt. Man, I was looking at I doubted myself. I gotta go home and cry. My wife trying to encourage me, I text her. You don't care nothing about me. Don't even test me back. You know, I want to provoke a fight. I need somebody to feel bad for me. She said, I ain't gonna, she said, I ain't gonna even, we ain't going that, that, that day. Mm -hmm. Man, we ain't going that day. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cause I was in the flesh. Come home with my pity party. Everybody in the house. I want to go to my room. I want to fall on my face. I want to pray. And when I got on my face to get ready to pray, it's like y'all rebuked me. No. Get up. Because that's what we do. Thank you. From the, uh, the slightest disappointment, the slightest thing that happened, all we start doing y'all now is going to lose faith. Did you call me to do it? Did you tell me to do it? Am I missing you, y'all? No! You can't be moved by what you see. You can't be moved by how you feel. Right. You have to trust y'all. And you got to remain patient. Goodness, we start being mean to folks. Mean to everybody else, talking crazy. Acting, oh, can we go through something? Yeah, we got to straighten up. Meekness. I seen more Hebrews be so full of pride. I seen a small amount of Hebrews be meek. I seen a whole lot of Hebrews, you know, show some false humility. Oh, I saw a whole lot of Hebrews show false humility. See a whole lot of Israelites be self righteous, but meek means you're being humble. You ain't gotta fight for yourself. You ain't gotta chase no lie. You ain't got to, you know what I'm saying, uh, starting to argue. As a matter of fact, a person that's meek has understanding because they sold around. See, Moses was the meekest man of all the earth. Moses, not only did Mo Moses kill the man, Moses was also over the Cushites. Read Josephus. Read Jashin. Jashin, Jashin 75, 70 something. Read it. Moses, Moses could have been arrogant. He, be, he could have been conceited. He was raised to be that way. He was raised by Pharaoh's daughter. But the scripture says in Numbers 12, he was the meekest man over all the earth. Mm -hmm. He humbled himself. Now, because I can't be like Moses. He was great. Well, according to the scripture, the Bible says, the most high is not a respecter of persons. Why can't you not be meek yourself like Moses was? You can don't listen to the adversary tell you lies. We just got to work on us. We got to get past trying to be all deep and work on us. Temperance. We got to work on us. We got to get past the religious mindset. Get past being hard. Get past all this pride. Get past living the way of the world. We have to live a set apart life. See, when you look at 22 down through to 23, that's living a set-apart life. Because that's what, 
the opposite of what the world does. So when you're going through stuff and people trying to hate you, you still love them. When you're having tough times, you still keep joy. You still keep your peace. You still stay patient. You still stay gentle. You still stay good. You still keep the faith. You still be meek. You still keep temperance. That's what you do. You don't you, you don't all of a sudden get mad and start going to fornicate, commit a dungeon, become unclean, living lavishly, and, I, and commit idolatry and witchcraft because you're mad. You hating everybody, living in embarrassed, immunization, cutting yourself up, tearing yourself up, and all that kind of crap. I seen some of these, some of these pastors, man. It's hard for <coughs> you of you pastors, especially some of y'all Christian pastors, getting tattoos on yourself <laughs> because you say we ain't got to follow the Torah, and you tear yourself up at the other nations. You a fool to do some stupid stuff like that, and don't even read the Bible. And then many of y'all want to follow the crate who tearing himself up. One one six. He is ashamed of the good news because the good news comes from the Torah, <laughs> not Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John. <laughs> Oh, they. They just it's, it's, it's just manifested by then. Hallelujah, tell it. Tell Yahushua, Yahushua did not show himself to those and, 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 and Luke dealing with Acts and going through all the Paul's levels, all thirteen of Paul's levels, and him Peter and John them up to show him things concerning himself. But the word says start with Moses, the Torah is what is, that means. Started with Moses and all the prophets. Right. He showed them things concerning himself. And this is how you know that many people don't really read the word, the word or the Torah. Because what I'm saying may sound foreign. And they don't want to read for themselves to see if it's the truth. We are talking, she might be listening. But we hear someone else that was lied to, part of our assembly. Because somebody lied to them. They're going back to Christianity. You got to host the wrong thing because you want to move so fast. And that's not good. And shame on you people who are leading people astray like that because you ignorant. How about just reading your Bible and praying and asking Yah to show you the truth like all of us have to do. And getting past being fearful. Because being fearful, you would not inherit the kingdom of Yah. Just like a dog won't inherit the kingdom of Yah. Cowards and dogs. Making the decision on what you want to be. Praise Yah, I'm done. Hallelujah for the day. Praise God. Almighty God, we thank you. We magnify you. We read your Kodesh name. We lift your name on high. For you are our strength and you are our salvation. Hallelujah. Oh, we just magnify you, Almighty Yahuwah. I'm asking you in the name of Yahushua today, help us to walk by faith, to walk in meekness and gentleness, to walk by the rule of Kodesh and not in the carnal mindset. Teach us how to please you. I pray and ask you, Almighty, give us the spirit of understanding and give us wisdom. Bring conviction on us with your with, with, with the rule of Hakodesh that we can turn from sin and live a repentive lifestyle. Show us your ways, Almighty. Show us your word. Help us to live by faith and not by sight. Help us to please you and walk in righteousness. For you are our strength and you are our salvation. And we're asking for your help. We're asking for you to be with us. We're asking for you to keep us. We're asking for you to be a major part of our life because, y'all, we love you and we thank you. And we want to show our love to you by being obedient to you and not trying to follow man. We magnify you and we just baruch your Kodesh name. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we have any announcements? Shalom, everyone. Shalom. 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 Have a good day. Have a good day.